Hello everyone. Um, I've been meaning to make this video for like two months now. I went to the LA Art Book Fair in the end of February with a couple of friends and it was really fun. It was my first time ever going to the LA Art Book Fair. There was so much to take in. Um, I definitely want to go again next year because I have experience now. We kind of didn't get to do everything that we wanted to do because it's just so vast. So I kind of want to go next year with more of a plan. But anyway, I wanted to make this video and show you all of the books that I got because I got quite a few books at the fair and then after we went to the last bookstore in LA, downtown LA, which is really cool, huge bookstore. It was my first time going there too. So I want to show you all the things that I got and kind of tell you about my experience at the art book fair. We left around 8.30 from San Diego and got into LA. We parked at this just parking garage structure. I think we got into LA about 10.30 or 11. Didn't take us that long to get there, thankfully. Um, then we just walked right into the art fair. It's a completely free event. We went on the Saturday of the fair. It spans over four days with Thursday being a preview night that you can go to for $10 which I think I'm probably going to do next year just because it gets so crowded later in the day. Um, we actually left to go get lunch and we couldn't even get back in because the line was too long so we missed a speaker that I wanted to see but oh well always next year. Um, and then we walked in and it's just exactly what it sounds like. It's a massive art book fair. It's at the Museum of Contemporary Art, which is in downtown LA. Um, they kind of move everything out of the museum, all of the art, any installations, everything is moved out and all of these different vendors, publishers, artists, independent artists, independent publishers, um, set up tables where they have literally thousands of books to choose from. I was completely overwhelmed with the selection that was there. Um, that's why I say next year I definitely want to go with more of a plan in place. But I did find a lot of cool things just poking around, browsing around the tables. They have everything from a whole section on photography. They have a whole section on obviously different arts, any kind of art media that you could ever want to know or look at or interested in you could probably find it there a lot of indie artists there was like a whole room of independent artists making zines where you could also buy fun things like posters pins t-shirts tote bags any kind of thing you would want um and then of course there is like the big publishing houses like i think tashin had a table there um I think Faden or Fidon, however you say it, they also had a set up there. So there's really something for everyone. Um, even if you're like not that into art or not that into books, like you could still find something cool that you'd be interested in, maybe a zine or something. Oh, and there's all these really cool vintage sellers. Like that was one thing I wanted to kind of go back and see. Um, when we left to go get lunch, we didn't realize we weren't going to be able to get back in. But they had one vendor had all these vintage copies of the East Village Other and the Berkeley Barb and all these underground independent newspapers from the 60s and they were so cool like the psychedelic covers and um, really cool art. I actually have a whole book over here somewhere called Free Press and it's about all that stuff so it was really cool to see the actual things in person. Um, I wanted to buy one. They actually were very expensive, maybe like 20 bucks. So I definitely next year will hit that up. Um, but let me get into what I got. First book I got is this really short, it's almost like a zine, but it's a little compilation of short stories, interviews, questions, things like that by this publishing house called Paper Monument. And this book is called I Like Your Work, Art and Etiquette. And it's basically just what it sounds like, how you show work and how to respond to people's comments about your work, how to make better comments about work. Um, it's kind of supposed to be humorous too, so this will be interesting. I'm definitely going to review all the books that I show you, um, but this is the first book that I picked up. Really good. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm going to school to be an art educator, so this is something, talking about art, that's really important to me, so that's why I picked up this book. Alright, the next book I got is another, like, 
a lot of them are arts education books. They're not. <laughs> I didn't buy like fun art books for the most part because I, if you can see over here, over there, I have um, a giant collection of coffee table books of art. So I didn't really go in that direction when I was at the art book fair. I went more for like art theory, art education, things like that that I'm learning about myself. So the next book that I got is by this Arts and Society um, publishing house and they're actually called Valise, V-A-L-I-Z, that's how you pronounce it. Um, this one is Arts Education Beyond Art, Teaching Art in Times of Change. Um, I haven't started reading this one yet. Um, it's a really pretty cover. It has this almost splattered design. It feels really nice and then it's very academic. It's full of different essays and how um, arts education is changing and how to keep up kind of with the times of the new directions that art is taking apart from just creating art the same old ways. So this is going to be a really interesting read. Definitely going to review it. Um, another art education book, Teaching Art in the Neoliberal Realm, Realism versus Cynicism. Again, this one is about educational strategies. Um, it's by the same publishing company, Valise Arts and Society. Um, again, a really cool, pretty cover. It just feels really nice to hold. It looks cool on your bookshelf. Um, and this one is the way in which we have kind of marketed education as more of a business model where we're churning out a product rather than focusing on individual education um, and it's something that's really important for our education so that's why I bought this book. Um, I will be reviewing it as soon as I finish reading it. I got a third book by the same publishing house. This one is called Spaces for Criticism, Shifts in Contemporary Art Discourses. This one I actually have started reading. I am about just this far in but let me show you already. I don't want to lose my place. Already, I have highlighted a bunch of stuff in here. This is a really, really cool book. Just a way about the ways that art criticism is changing, how we can reclaim art criticism, um, how technology has changed art criticism, where art criticism is taking place. It's a really interesting read. I'm definitely going to review this once I finish reading it and apply whatever I glean from this book into my uh, future art teaching curriculum. Okay, now for some more fun things that I got. I got a couple of zines um, at the art book fair. Funny things, all kinds of different stuff. Um, this one's not funny, but <laughs> this one is trying to make the personal political feminism and conscious raising, consciousness raising. Um, so these are a reprint of consciousness raising guidelines from 1975, which I thought was really cool. Um, there's a lot to be gleaned and it's actually like got some really cool elements to it. What I like in here is that it's basically just a series of questions that you can ask a group um, to kind of get conversations going, make people think more, think outside of the box, um, think about why things are the way that they are. There's lots of different categories um, and it mostly has to deal with being a woman, being a minority, but I think you can apply the questions to a lot of different groups of people. So I thought this would be interesting, and I like the illustrations are really cool on it. I thought this might be good to have just to look through if I ever do um, some kind of curriculum having to do with social issues that I would be able to refer to this book and to... Um, ask my students some important questions and get them kind of thinking outside the box, thinking more, discussing more with each other, that kind of thing. So I bought that. And then another zine that I bought that's really, really cute is this one called Art Girl Dreams. This one is by Cosmica. It's like they were like an all girls um, zine publishing and like arts collective that had exhibited there. And basically these are all stories about girls growing up and the way that they dreamed about being an artist and how art affected them in their lives 
and how art made them feel powerful maybe when they came from a place where they didn't feel so powerful um, and basically their dreams of being an artist when they grew up so um, and then there's a place I really like this there's a place in the back for you to write what are your art girl dreams so um, yeah this is a really cute nice little book I got some paint on it but oh well um, and the quote on the back says, my art is the way I reestablish the bonds that tie me to the universe. That's really cool. That's a nice thought. Um, so yeah, I this is a really cute, like fun little zine. I've spent some time reading through it and it's definitely inspiring and it's all done. Each artist has done things in a unique way, so it's really cool. Okay, so the next two that I got are just like super funny. They're not um, really very serious or compared to the other things that I bought there more just for fun but I saw them and I really liked the concept because I like the concept of things that are very concise and kind of focused on one theme which is what exactly what these books are so this one is called Guitar Face and it's basically just pictures of men it's all men playing the guitar and making these like crazy faces uh, uh, as they play the guitar like getting really into it getting you know their groove on and yeah it's just really funny and uh, hilarious and if you know most of the people in the pictures it can be really funny I love the John Mayer like he's so gross looking but yeah it's really funny and then I got this one was by Kill Your Idols that was the group that published this and they had a whole bunch they had literally themes of all kinds of things um, I bought another one from them this one's called stoned and it's not what you think it is it's all different celebrity headstones so like look Rick James we've got Whitney Houston right there um, James Dean James Manfield Jane Mansfield um, some of these are incredible, like, wow, look at these headstones, like, with actual photos, some of them have sculptures, I don't know, it's really interesting, I always kind of like going into graveyards and looking at the way people express their sentiments on headstones and things, they're really interesting, and culturally, how different cultures represent themselves on a headstone, um, so yeah, I bought this book and on the front is Jim Morrison's grave, which I hope to go visit one day in Paris. And on the back, Graceland, which I've actually been there. There's a picture of me as a baby in front of there. So very cool. Uh, those are the two funner, more fun ones that I got at the art book fair. And then the last one that I got, I didn't actually get this at the art book fair, but I did see it there. So I thought I would include it. I found it on Amazon for a much better price. Um, which is probably bad. I probably should have supported the local small business, but you know, gotta save those pennies. So this is just a book. It's all in Japanese, but it's a dictionary of color combinations, which I thought was cool and could probably be useful. And it's basically just different. It starts off with color combinations of two colors, moves on to three colors. So and these are just color stories that could work well together if you're interested in graphic design or coming up with a color story or something. There's four colors and it's just pleasing, nice color combinations that work well. I'm assuming in print. I don't think it's like web design or anything like that. I think it's just print. And the colors are in English. Like for example, this one says oil green, slate color, dark Tyrian blue and carmine red and I wonder if those translate to some kind of color processing software printing ink or something like that but I thought this book would be useful someday when coming up with color combinations or discussing color theory or color um color relationships I thought it would be a good book um, and I'm just looking in the back and there are some other cool books. I don't know if by the same publishing company, but like History of Japanese Fashion, 
layered colors of kimono. I don't know. Really cool stuff. I always like Japanese stuff. I can't wait to go there one day, but very interesting. So that was everything that I got at the art book fair. We went to the art book fair. We were there for like a good like four or five hours. We saw what we could see. Um, it's very easy to get like visually overloaded. And I don't know about you, but I can't just go on and on and on and on and on doing something forever. I kind of need to take a break, like get some food, recharge, come back. So we went to this really cool art installation, which I probably will discuss on my blog. So if you're interested in reading about the experience I had at this art installation, um, that was all neon. It was called Tijuana Tangier Chandelier by, I want to say Jason Rhodes. Sounds right. Um, but check my blog in a few weeks and it will be up. I'll let you know when that's up. Um, and then we went there, killed some time, and then we walked back to the um, art book fair. But like I said, we couldn't get back in. So then we decided to go to the last bookstore, which I've never been to. And my other friend, Leandra, who was with us, had never gone. But Andrew is an old pro, so we went there. And... Um, we had to wait outside in a line because they were having a guest speaker, which we didn't realize, but we finally got to go inside, and I got three books while I was at the last bookstore. Um, I haven't read any of these yet either, but this summer I'm going to be doing a lot of reading. So um, the first book that I got is a poetry book uh, because I wanted to read more poetry this year. I have a few poetry books that I've collected recently, and this one I really liked. It's called The Universe of Us by Lang Leave, and it's just poems about, like, being in love and your significant other and things that you feel for the positive, things you may feel for the negative, different kinds of things. Um, I don't know. I just, and they're really short, like, all the poems, the longest ones are maybe a couple paragraphs, like, that's a, a longish one. So... It's uh, going to be a nice little dabble into poetry, a nice little romantic uh, retreat, and I'm excited to read it. And again, I'll review it when I finish reading it. Um, I got another book by Haruki Murakami, who I just read my first book by him, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. I'll probably review that in a video, um, a short review. I really enjoyed it. The ending left me... I don't know, dissatisfied, but I think that's kind of the whole point of the book. But I got this book of his short stories, which I was really interested in reading. Um, now I have a book, I have read a novel, I have a book of short stories, which I'm excited to see how he deals with that genre, and then I also have a nonfiction book by him that I got. So I'm going to read all three and then kind of compare all three together and see which one I like the most. and all that so I'm excited to read this one it's called The Elephant Vanishes and it's just a group of short stories there's it looks like a decent amount I'm not gonna count but there's looks like probably like 16 or more so that'll be a good summer read and then the last book that I got at the last bookstore was Essays Against Everything by Mark Grief. Um, this one, the cover and the title just really drew me into it. Um, and it's basically just like the title sounds. Essays against the establishment, against the status quo, against the way things are done in society. So it seems like a really interesting book. Sorry, there's like a man back and forth like 50 times I think they're moving in or something but it's distracting sorry um but I think this is going to be an interesting book it's been a long time since I've spent time reading like non-fiction essays or odd ed pieces um and I usually really enjoy them and even if I don't necessarily agree with everything it's like a refreshing perspective and I just like this book I'm a little sad because I got paint on it Oh, but oh well that's what happens it's just the dust jacket let's see what it looks like underneath the dust jacket oh just a boring book but yeah that was everything that I got 
I'm gonna be writing a lot more about my experience in LA at the art book fair, at the um, installation that I went to. I'm definitely gonna review all these books for you once I finish reading them. So stay tuned if you're interested in any of them. Um, if you have any questions, just ask me down below. I can kind of try to find out for you the answers. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.